I don't link love to pleasure. I link it to pain subconsciously. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, now I'm, you know, now I'm this age, I want to find the love of my life, but subconsciously my, all of my energy is moving in a completely different lane, different direction. So I'm going to sabotage every love that comes across. Every time I meet someone, I'm going to sabotage it. So this is life, right? We, we want one thing, but our energy is moving in another. Mm -hmm. We don't even realize it. It's like, why? I want this, but I, but my energy wants something else. So we've got to clear that because and we don't even realize we're sabotaging because we truly do. We truly want the love. So we got to go to the root, what's causing it, and then just upgrade it so that you do feel safe. And you're right. Repetition over and over and over, but not just telling you you're safe over and over is going to do it. We got to find out why in the first place it feels unsafe because it has a valid reason to feel unsafe. It truly felt unsafe for a good reason. And until it we make a promise to that part of you and, and let it know it doesn't live in that world anymore. It lives in this world now. Upgrade that belief in your cells and your energy and let it know now we can link it to pleasure and why will it feel safe? And then it can be in one lane because we can't be in two lanes at once. <laughs> Hi, Christina. Welcome to the Awaken Heart Podcast. Hi, thanks for having me, Nancy. Thanks for coming on. You're in the magic womb of the Santa Anas right now. And I was just telling you how much I felt they were magical, even though it's leaving you a little sniffly. <laughs> after they are like, magical. Yeah. After that was one of my favorite things living in LA, Southern California for all those years. I just, I don't know, it just really sent me and, you know, our evenings are really cool over there. And especially those warm evenings and the wind, I always felt it's magical. So I'm taking the magic throughout these airwaves and bringing them right into my little room here in Michigan <laughs> right now, because it's starting to get a little cold right now here. So yeah, I definitely feel part of the earth here when there's Santa Ana's going yeah, on. Yeah. As long as we're not suffering, but even when we're suffering a little bit. So I'm really, I can't wait to dive into this conversation. And, um, you know, I brought, I've been bringing a lot of guests on like yourself over these last, probably the last couple that I've recorded about how so many of us are, you know, we might've started doing something else and then we're finding that it's not fulfilling to us. And mm -hmm. we're beginning to create these lives that we love and that we're living and we're creating an impact and giving it back to others. And when we light the candle for ourselves, we're giving permission for others to do the same. So I know that you had um, you had a life 30 year corporate career and, yeah. you know, I like what you were saying on your website is just such a perfect visual image of you, like toting, like probably a carry on bag in your high heels, like all purposeful <laughs> going to your first class seat to, uh, you know, go wherever you had to go toward. You must've been traveling for your work or, or whatnot, but then oh, there's just yes. that nagging feeling that, Oh my God, there's not enough. There's something missing. And then it comes down to with a lot of people women keep settling for this is there's a feeling of not enoughness, um, creating no boundaries in their life, whether it's in their relationships, their families, in their work with their boss, in their environment. And we as women have this need to feel liked, like, oh, I don't want to say that because I don't want them to like me or what are they going to think about me? Yeah. And you had this aha moment where you're like, okay, this isn't really fulfilling to me at all. And you've worked a lot in the personal development field for all these years as well. But then there was this thing that I'll let you explain that really, that you really, that really changed your whole life. And it was, it was hypnotherapy, right? You started some form of hip hypnosis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had a jolt. I had a little jolt. <laughs> I had an awakening jolt moment too. Um, but that? yeah, you're right. Hypnosis certainly, certainly is what set things off for me because I was able to find some invisible barriers. But um, but yeah, you're right. I was that woman running through the airport, trying to be super mom, mm -hmm. um, had the high heels, you know, every week traveling and then coming home doing little league games and cooking and cleaning and, you know, trying to just be all do all people pleaser mom, woman. Yes, I'll do that. No, I'll do this. Oh, wait, hold on. I got to look perfect too you know, like so many of us trying to do so many things. And, 
you know, on the inside, I felt really bad. Like, why am I not happy? I I worked so hard to have all these things that are supposed to make me happy. You know, I, I graduated, went to college. Now I have this career that everybody is supposed to, you know, on the outside looked great. Why don't I feel great? And I had a moment, I'll, I'll share, that I was in my backyard pulling weeds Saturday morning in my pajamas. So, you know, you can imagine like these, nothing glamorous here, mix match, like TJ Maxx pajamas or something out in the weeds. And Love the kids- TJ had, Maxx. Yeah. <laughs> Marshall's um, TJ Maxx Ross. Yeah, yeah. And um, my teenage boys at the time had not, you know, picked up the dog poop or anything. So it was just one of these, you know, mornings, like, really, I've been traveling all week, I'm pulling weeds now on my day off. And my husband at the time came out and said, no, I'm going to go for a surf. I live in Huntington Beach, Surf City, California. And I had this moment where I was like, are you kidding me? You know, I'm, I'm sitting here pulling weeds. I'm exhausted from flying you know, back home, he's going for a surf. Kids are like doing their thing. They didn't do their chores. And I heard a voice over here on the right side of my ear, I'm pointing. And it was not my intuition. It was a different voice. And it literally said, when are you going to stop waiting for someone or something to make you happy and start doing what makes you happy? And it, it literally stopped me in my tracks. And I thought, are you kidding me? Like, you know, what is this? It's not my intuition. And it was just in that moment where I really knew, like, my marriage is terrible. I'm not happy. This career is not happy. My health, I was on medication for anxiety. I was spending things like crazy, my money, I was in debt, I was like, nothing was good. And so that was that moment when I knew I had to go deep and look at those parts of me because I had Yes, I had this spiritual path on the side, but I still was afraid to go really deep and find out things about me that I knew I needed to explore patterns and pain that I just hadn't peeled away. And so, yeah, one of them was hypnotherapy and many other kinds of energy work and healing and traditional therapy. And just, I dove in and really started peeling the layers back. And through that process, you know, I found myself and lots of tears and, mm -hmm. um, and, and found my way to have the courage to leave a corporate career, six figures, and, you know, still have bills to pay and kids mm -hmm. in college and all those things. But yeah, I had a moment out in the weeds with the dog poop and the whole thing. <laughs> It's always like those little simple moments. You're just doing the random, just like somebody that throws their back out in their black diamond skier and they bend over to put on their underwear and they throw their backs out. It's those moments. Now you said that you had this, aha, uh, how you heard this voice on the right side. The right side is the creative side, right? And the intuition and the left side's more the thinking analytical. Yeah. Yeah. And I've heard the voice twice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I certainly hear things when I'm with clients and doing in you know, um, sessions with clients and, and getting, you know, intuitive moments, but this particular type of guidance voice, I've, I've only heard twice, one mm -hmm. other time. Um, and the other time it was kind of that same voice over here on the right side. Mm -hmm. So, um, the other time was when I was just, you know, one of those moments when you're just sobbing and mm -hmm. feeling so alone and it was like, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard that voice. Um, and what was interesting, I was actually in a therapy session and I told my therapist, I said, I, I have to tell you this. And she's not particularly spiritual. And I've never told this story. And she told, I said, I just heard a voice and it told me I'm not alone. And she turned white mm. and she said, I have to tell you this. She said, a client was here about two hours ago, sat in that same part of the couch and said the exact same thing. She said, she also heard a voice that said, she's not alone. <laughs> I was wow. like, what? <laughs> yeah. I was like, someone's visiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's in that room? <laughs> I know. It was pretty cool. You know what? It's funny because I've had that moment where it's actually a voice, like another one crying, sobbing, not knowing what to do and just heartbroken, literally. 
it, I think it was don't go. I was trying to make a decision and it literally, I heard a voice. It said, yeah. don't go. And then there was this calming. I smiled. It felt like I was wrapped in love. And I went to sleep. I went to sleep peacefully. Of course I did what it didn't. I did the opposite of what it told me to do. And I got a, a lesson smacked in my face, but I did hear a voice probably once and twice in my lifetime, literally a physical voice. I'm like, oh my gosh, you right. don't even think about it. You're just enwrapped in it. And it's so beautiful and calming. Yeah. So yeah, such a beautiful thing. You're smiling like from ear to ear there. <laughs> so, so you've got so many accreditations, which I went over in the intro, um, but you're a rapid transformational therapist, clinical hypnotherapist, empowerment coach, medical intuitive therapist, Reiki master, and advanced theta healer. And the thing that you're using, the modality that's really transformed yourself in a lot of others' lives is the RTT, right? The rapid transformational therapist. Yeah. Can you explain how I saw that it kind of wraps this, all the other modalities like NLP, neural logistics, Am I saying that right thing? Yeah, neuro linguistics, yeah. <laughs> neuro linguistics. We all, all got together. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how is this different than like just NLP? And how does it work? Like it combines all these modalities, but how does it work to help somebody get over some of these like long held patterns that they just can't seem to get out of? Yeah, that's such a good question because first of all, hypnotherapy has this sort of cloud of, you know, myth, myth around what does it really do? Um, and, you know, we don't, we, we see people at the fair or something on stage, you know, doing funny chicken things and, mm -hmm. and we wonder, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to volunteer for that, but, you know, RTT, it's a method of hypnotherapy. So we all have that place. We have a conscious and, an, and a subconscious mind. And we are able to access the subconscious mind when we just quiet the conscious mind. So we do it all day long. We go into our subconscious mind. So if we've ever all driven home from work and we get in the driveway or, or you know, park our car, and we don't remember stopping at the lights or, you know, did I, did I stop or did I run the red light? I don't remember. And we go get into these theta and alpha brain waves and we don't realize it, or we're doing the dishes and someone's talking. We don't, we don't hear them. We're, we're in our daydreams. So we go there all day long and we don't realize it. So we just access that using a certain method, but RTT specifically is different than some of those other methods in that we, rather than just say affirmations or repetitive things to say, you know, you hate smoke or you, you know, over and over and over and over, which is very effective. RTT says, let's go and find out the very root and reason why you have that behavior or why you have that feeling or that belief in the first place. So if I don't feel enough or you're feeling sad or you're sabotaging something in your life, there's a belief that's there. Why is it there in the first place? Because our mind only creates beliefs to keep us safe and keep us alive. Whether it's good or bad or right or wrong, we all do sabotaging things and we kind of kick ourselves and say, why, why am I doing that? Even if it's eating cookies at you know, 11 o'clock at night, we kind of kick ourselves and get mad at ourselves sometimes. Like, why did I spend that? Why did I date that guy again? Or that person, those people again? Why did I say that? Why did I yell at my kids again? Or we do things and then we get mad and, and we're wondering why. So these beliefs are buried down there. We find out why. So RTT is rapid transformational. So it gets to the very, very root and our mind is so fascinating. We ask questions. We say, what is the very root cause and reason this belief was there in the very first place? And it goes back to moments when it was very, very first formed. And when you're able to find out, oh, okay, when I was five or in the womb, or of course I do a lot of past life regression, this belief was first created. We can then interrupt that belief and then replace it. Our mind is magnificent. It learns by repetition. We can replace a belief, but we first need to find out why is it there in the first place? Because it made sense. It might've made sense. Of course, I know this is a very spiritual podcast. So, you know, in another life or in the womb, when we heard our parents talking about something or, you know, we, we heard an argument and we, we misunderstood or, or that made sense at that time. And it's often like we upgrade our phones or we upgrade our laptops. We need to upgrade our beliefs or 
you know, we need to have closure. We need to learn that lesson and move on. So we get to the root and then we rewire and recode in another belief and we clear that energy and we, we upgrade that energy. So whether it's a belief or it's energy, it's sort of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So going into, so I know that we're so impressionable as young children and a lot of the wounding happens when we're at that young impressionable age, zero to seven, I believe it is where yeah. a lot like you're a sponge. A lot of it can be attributed to that. So even going back further in utero, you know, your child in the mother's womb, you're feeling everything that your mother is feeling, you're, you know, the environment, if she doesn't feel safe, that's going into yeah. your, your little bot, these little bodies, but even going beyond that, we're going into generational trauma or something that's wired in our DNA. Can yeah. you maybe explain uh, a little bit about the generational trauma or stuff that's wired into our DNA, even like not even from maybe your own biology or your own bloodline, but the bloodline of women that have gone before you like this, you know, yeah. on that level and how you would perhaps maybe explain how that works and how you would help somebody to overcome some of that. Yeah. It's a lot of the work I do with beta healing um, beta. and some of the other energy healing that we'll do, but you know, that's, in a hypnosis state, well, we're able to go in and, and, you know, it's a mix of using some um, intuition and some of the other hypnosis skills, but yeah, you know, I mean, there's science to back this up too. I mean, we can look at DNA and you can see if someone has ancestors that have been through wars and famines and, and the Holocaust and other things, you can see the, the changes in DNA with, with that type of of, um, you know, crises and, and trauma in, excuse me, in our, in our DNA. So, um, even how do you see that? Just let me interrupt there. How, without having a, I don't see the, I don't, yeah. I don't do the blood do they, work and yeah. I don't see the DNA. But it's I so don't interesting. Know how they see it. It is, it is interesting. I don't know what they physically see, but mm -hmm. I know that there's evidence mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. see a difference in the DNA. Mm -hmm. Um, now, energetically speaking, because that's that's how I work, and in terms of in in hypnosis and the beliefs is how I work. What are the beliefs? Because it's not even necessarily the trauma that happens or the ancestral trauma that happens. It's always just the meaning that someone attaches to something, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but oftentimes it's not even like you just mentioned, it's not even what happens to them. It's what happens to their grandmother's grandmother's grandmother that happens. So what we'll, what we'll do is we will start to ask questions and we'll start to just peel back the layers of in theta healing. Like we'll, we'll literally go back and say, all right, we'll pick, we'll, we'll start to say, is it this side or that side? Is your paternal, maternal? We'll start to dig and dig and dig. It's literally called digging deeper work. And we'll start to ask layers and layers of questions. And as we do that, we'll get into layers and layers of energy work. And there's an entire process behind it, but we'll be able to do the energy clearing from ancestors you know, depending on, so it doesn't even necessarily like many, many times people will feel like I've had to, ex it's kind of a little bit hard to explain because it's not necessarily something that the client has to experience, but the relief that people will feel and the process that people will go through just knowing that, you know, cause when we're doing this process, they'll be able to just feel so much lighter and so much freer having gone through that process, but theta healing is really beautiful at clearing ancestral, um, uh, trauma. Um, and ac actually all of this stuff, you know, all the energy healing and, and hypnosis, but theta healing is particularly wonderful for that. Mm -hmm. And how is the healing happened? So it's just taking that, which is in the dark and bringing it to the light and really seeing, oh, okay, this is, and then they're understanding it. So it's not hidden anymore. It's brought to the light that, okay, this is the way that uh, that's triggering me and that I'm reacting because of this. So does it absolutely clear or is it something that, okay, 
those triggers and such might come up, but then you have the tools of awareness. Oh, this is why. And then you make a different choice. Is that, is that how it works? Yeah, it's, it's all of the above. So, you know, once you see something, particularly with hypnosis, once you're able to go back and see how and when and why and where a belief was created, whether it was an ancestor's belief or, you know, we go back in hypnosis and you can see, wow, that was, you know, that was actually my grandmother's life or another life where I was in the womb and I heard the doctors say, or, you know, that's really common, by the way, um, w- w- going back in hypnosis and being in the womb, like you mentioned that, mm-hmm. um, or being an infant and hearing, you know, the nanny make a comment about how an infant looks or, um, hearing parents argue or not having money, or I never wanted this child, or, you know, we hear all kinds of things, but just being able to go back and have a different perception and, and really understand things. When you understand something, it literally changes everything because, you know, we, it, it's like Santa Claus. Once you go back, you don't have, once you know, he's not real, you don't have to go back to every moment you ever thought he was real. You just now know he's not real and you just can move forward with a completely different paradigm shift. Right. And say, okay, well, that was fine then, but now I know he's not real. And now my life is a little bit different. Right. And I, I act differently and I behave differently and I feel differently. What I find is that it's the energy shift. So the support and the energy shift, because the triggers you write are still there. So as someone is changing a paradigm shift and an energy shift and a belief shift, the tendency, because our cells and our body are, are now shifting because our subconscious mind is in our body and our body keeps the score and our cells have a carbon memory. So our cells literally want to go back to that memory. So we might in our subconscious have shift our belief, but we energetically are going to be like a magnet back to that energy, back to that belief. That's why we get triggered. That's why we get sucked back. You know, we're just getting drawn back, pulled back. So I meet with clients regularly after a session to give them exercises, to speak with their inner child, to continue to cleanse the energy to move the energy through to teach them pivoting exercises to say hey when you feel that coming up i'm going to show you how to pivot and move out of that energy quickly so that when it fe- when you feel it you're like hold on i recognize that i'm going to move out of that energy quickly so then yeah they are they're able to shift it and move it quickly because we're human we're still going to get triggered we still mm-hmm. recognize it but now it's not weeks or months or years of being stuck. It's hold on. I recognize I'm, that is familiar to me, that vibration, that energy, that, you know, that vibe, that person that, you know, whatever it was is familiar, but now I know I have the tools to move through it. Mm-hmm. Cause you're going to go back to what, you know, or what makes you feel safe. And even though it might be negative, on the outside might be negative. Like, okay, you keep self-sabotaging relationships. Well, well, that's going to keep you safe because then you're not going to be in this relationship or you're going back to what you know. So when you bring them into this hypnosis, you're bringing that light of awareness to whatever is causing these issues. And then you, through repetition and through reprogramming the mind, because you have to create new Sure, something that feels comfortable. Yeah. I love that word. So you have to, so you're so comfortable with the negative. So, cause that feels like home and familiar and it's brought into the light of awareness. So now they're out of that. Okay. They see what it is, but they have, you know, you take them through exercises and everything to get them used to this new way of being. So that is what's going to be drawing them to feeling comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So instead of going that here, you're going over here. <laughs> yeah. So, our, I mean, our mind, uh, one of the rules of the mind that Marissa Peer who taught, who taught me RTT, who created RTT. Um, she always reminds us that our mind will move us away from pain and toward pleasure. However, what does it link to pain and what does it link to pleasure? We think, well, love is pleasure. However, love is also being vulnerable. Love is expressing yourself. Love is putting yourself out there and being exposed to things that might cause you pain. So deep, 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 deep down, I might have a subconscious belief that, 
oh no, no, when I was younger and I was vulnerable, that was very painful or that didn't work out well because, you know, dad bursted out or dad left and that didn't feel good. So I don't link love to pleasure. I link it to pain subconsciously. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, now I'm, you know, now I'm this age, I want to find the love of my life, but subconsciously my, all of my energy is moving in a completely different lane, different direction. So I'm going to sabotage every love that comes across. Every time I meet someone, I'm going to sabotage it. So this is life, right? We we want one thing, but our energy is moving in another. Mm-hmm. We don't even realize it. It's like, why? I want this, but I but my energy wants something else. So we've got to clear that because and we don't even realize we're sabotaging because we truly do we truly want the love. So we got to go to the root, what's causing it. And then just upgrade it so that you do feel safe. And you're right, repetition over and over and over, but not just telling you you're safe over and over is going to do it. We got to find out why in the first place it feels unsafe because it has a valid reason to feel unsafe. It truly felt unsafe for a good reason. And until it make a promise to that part of you and, and let it know it doesn't live in that world anymore. It lives in this world now upgrade that belief in your cells and your energy and let it know now we can link it to pleasure and why will it feel safe and then it can be in one lane because we can't be in two lanes at once Mm -mm, mm -mm. so how do you help people identify these patterns and what common signs might you see to help break some kind of repetitive cycle well you know just i i think i think people know the patterns I I you know by asking questions and talking about their life and you know and 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 saying hold on let's pause there for a second do you see how you just said this but you know this comes up and they'll go oh okay yeah you know I, I you know just by talking do people realize that sometimes we talk out both sides and we don't realize mm-hmm. it right um or we sabotage we're sabotaging things or you know just by identifying it because you know, that's, that's my job is to help people understand and see the patterns and, and help them get what they want. And by really creating a safe place for them to talk about what do they truly want? Well, let's go deep because this is such vulnerable work. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you don't usually call your hypnotherapist first. It's typically after they've tried other types of therapy or other methods um and they're they're pretty open-minded at this point Mm -hmm. um and some some clients will come to me for medical reasons as well but so you know really identity work and parts work is a big also part of what i do is let's talk to these different parts and different archetypes um a common one uh with women or 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 men is we have a mom archetype or a, a wife archetype, and we've got this, you know, maybe somebody that wants to be really successful, or we just have these different parts within us. And so I'll show them through through different exercises is, do you see how strong this dad dad archetype is, or this mom archetype is, and do you, this career archetype, do you see how this they won't let each other both be successful. Every time you try to be successful, the mom archetype comes in and says, you're going to be a terrible mother if you have this great career and she's not going to let this one be successful. Or you can't have the love of your life come in or your career is going to be terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, You can't have both. Do you see how, so we talk to these parts and we get to know them and love them. And, you know, it's parts work or inner child or parenting. So we, kind of break it up and let them see the different parts and love all these parts of them because they've never identified the different parts. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. I've heard of a lot of this, or I've actually done it. It's in the shamanic journey where you bring in all the fragmented parts of your soul Mm -hmm. and they're bringing them back together. And then it's pretty incredible. It sounds like you're being taken on this incredible journey and there's the, all the other different archetypes. There's a, Oh God, there's goddess archetypes and there's, yes, yes, all that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah, so we do all the, the goddess, um, the divine mother, mm -hmm. divine woman, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and depending on clients, we'll get, a, you know, a lot of the energy work, a lot of the energy clearing and teaching a lot of clients to really connect with their higher self, mm -hmm. let that part of themselves, you know, guide themselves because, you know, a, a lot of this is reconnecting clients with just with themselves they they are mm -hmm. separated from themselves disease is being separated from ourselves and from god or higher power and so i really am working toward connecting them back to themselves just allowing them to feel a connection to themselves because mm -hmm. all the hypnosis in the world <laughs> or reiki it's not going to matter if they're disconnected from themselves mm -hmm. and a higher power um, that is my feeling that's the work i do so I'm wanting them to feel, what does it feel like to be connected and listen to that true voice inside? Mm -hmm. And so these, these parts, these voices, these are all parts of them. So, and we've always been taught that it's outside of us. Even religions taught us that there's some bearded man in the sky that's going to condemn us for doing this or, you know, condemn us for doing that or reward us for this or that we've placed the power outside of ourselves. when, you know, it's like as the wizard of Oz, who is it? The, the Glenda, the good witch, the power is always, it's always been inside of us. Right. And it, yeah. And it's coming back and, and, um, and loving ourselves, self-love. And even at my gym recently, they always have little questions that you, you check off when you, you check in, like it's this or that one is like, uh, is loving yourself what's more important, loving yourself or loving others first. And I checked off, you know, loving myself, all the other check boxes were mostly in the other one. Like, you know, it's important to love someone else rather than yourself. And I checked that, you know, self-love first and the girl beyond the register, like, yeah, girls, like, you know, no, yes. <laughs> so that's one of the most important things is to love yourself. And I love how everything that you teach and, um, medical intuitive you are as well. And we've seen in our whole sick care system about how, you know, putting our, you know, our health into a pill or into something that's not going to that root cause. And that's why I love like a lot of Eastern medicine, as opposed to Western medicine, God willing, though, if I broke my arm, if I needed surgery or my spleen taken out, I want to go to, you know, Western medicine for that. Yeah. But a lot of it is keeping people stuck in unhealthy behavior in the disease, disease in the body. And you go to the root and a lot of this new, um, medicine, or we can't even say new medicine. It was the old medicine until a hundred years when Rockefeller took over. Yeah. Yeah. Whole yeah. Other thing. <laughs> That's a whole other thing, but alternative medicine really is like, like a there's so many healing things in food. It's like I'm learning like in cloves and putting ginger with honey together. There's so many amazing things that yeah. natural world has for us in healing. So you go to the root in, in, um, can you kind of go into what a medical intuitive does? Like you're going yes. to the root. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking at the metaphysical mm -hmm. aspects of the, the energy and the medical, you know, aspect of an illness so of course we need western medicine and and you know i guess in the perfect world it would be so beautiful if, if energy and western medicine can be together and so i'm always encouraging clients you know find a doctor that will listen to to how you feel and what you are you know what you believe is going on and and can talk to you and if and, and if it doesn't feel like the right doctor, keep going until you find someone that feels like the right doctor. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm looking at the metaphysical aspect of it. So the emotional aspects that are connected to illness and the emotions that are, um, are, are in your organs and tissue and body. And so um, it's even called disease whispering and um, releasing the, the emotions that are stuck in our body. So, you know, every organ, it's just like when you go to the acupuncturist and there's these meridians and they'll touch, you know, part of your knee and go, oh, that's your kidney or, you know, your toe is that's your back. And you're like, ah, why does my ear hurt when you touch that part? So, um, so, you know, with medical intuition, um, intuitive therapy, um, I learned by Skylar Akamesis. She's amazing. Um, she's a master medical intuitive. And what we're doing is we're scanning the body intuitively and we're, it is a hypnosis method and we're using the energy from source 
um, whoever you know you believe in, and really allowing the body to speak to us about what's going on metaphysically, and whispering and speaking to the body and meeting what we call the wounded self, and that's actually a term that's used, you know, in in many energy healings. So when we go and we meet the wounded self, so if we're going to find out the source of what's going on in your knee or your kidney or whatever it might be, we go in and we literally are speaking to this wounded self, this part of you, which is very similar to what I might do in RTT hypnotherapy. Like, let me know, let's go to the root of this issue you're having in your love life or this issue you're having with smoking, but we're going to the wounded self and it might be an inner child. It might be someone in another life. It might be the the organ itself speaking to us um and so you know you have to be open-minded to this um but for those that this resonates with it's incredibly powerful Mm -hmm. and we we speak and we learn and we feel and we see we see sense here and know and we connect with the metaphysical you know what's going on metaphysically the energy behind the disease and all disease all disease from a metaphysical standpoint is a disconnection from self and and god or source Mm -hmm. and we need Mm -hmm. to find out how do we connect what's going on how can we connect back so between the energy clearing um, and what needs to be healed whether that's you know um, releasing anger, releasing pain, um, releasing sorrow and sadness, or you know bringing back joy, it's it's some kind of disconnection that we need to reconnect with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because everything is energy. We're all energy, vibration, and yes, yeah, that way. Yeah, and I definitely want to go into Reiki. So you use all these. Use all these modalities when someone works with you. Use use RTT. You 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 know if they have a medical issue, you might use that together, or you you combine a lot of these, or do you usually go to one or the other? Um, some I'm allowed to combine, and some I'm not. So, mm-hmm. but I will use them as needed. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So depending on what's going on, then I'll say, you know what, this is the time I need to use mm-hmm. this one. This is the time I need to use this one. And some people, you know, are certainly more open to energy healing and than others. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, we talk about what's going to be the best and what feels right. And others, you know, will say, just use whatever intuitively feels right in the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, it's, I always try to do what's right and what feels, feels, you know, it's going to work the most. You know, it's funny when I've been on the table, I love massage. I'm a massage whore. If someone's not giving me a good massage, I I know it right away. It's going to be horrible, but, um, I love massage when they're really good. And I can always tell, like, I'm like, are you, are you doing energy work on me? Cause I can always tell. And I can oh, always yeah. feel like, oh yeah, I am. I bet you can. Yeah. And so before we started um, recording this, I want to hear your story of Reiki. You said you had an incredible story. <laughs> so, uh, and yeah. for people that don't know what is Reiki, it's, it's another f- energy. It's another form of energy healing. So, um, but you had an experience, so I want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So when I first started with, um, hypnosis, RTT hypnosis, you know, I had moved from the corporate world into, you know, and I was in the higher education space. So very cerebral thinkers. I wasn't a teacher or anything. I was in sales and marketing, but still, you know, people, you know, completely different. And so I'm doing hypnosis, um, gathering my hours, practice sessions. And after every session, I would find that I was, towards the end, I was incredibly nauseated to the point where I would literally have to run and get sick. And just a very overwhelming feeling, completely drained, but vomiting, literally. And so I thought, oh my goodness, like I just left this huge career and now I can't do the new one because I'm (laughs) sick all the time. And of course I knew this was energy and I met with someone and she's like, you need to learn how to protect your energy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I am, I'm doing what everybody taught me how to do. I'm zipping myself up. She's like, no, you're not doing it enough. (laughs) You need to learn how to, you need to take Reiki to learn how to really protect your energy. You're absorbing, you know, people's energy too much. I thought, wow, I, I need to really learn some pretty good skills here. So that's why I started taking Reiki. It was not to be a Reiki master and give it to other people. It was to learn how to protect my own energy because I was getting 
so sick I couldn't give sessions. So I immediately started taking Reiki one and two and three and just kind of got my energy muscles so I could, you know, heal and help other people just be a channel for healing, of course, um, but protect myself and you know, and, and now I have really a ritual and a ceremony I do to ground myself before every session, to cleanse myself after, to protect myself. And, you know, if I forget any of those or I get lazy or I don't do them, I'll feel like, uh oh, I can feel it. I'm not, I didn't do something or I was rushing. Um, and I honor and I respect that. And it's made all the difference in the world. And it's so powerful. Mm. That reminds me of, I took a psychic development course a while ago and they taught us about pulling, po pulling roses. So you envision all these roses in your mind and whatever the color is. And then you put it, especially, you know, even like in a recording like this, I haven't used it in a while, but then you put a rose um, in front of whoever that it, pe people in the room, you imagine a rose or whoever, like if you're a zoom call, like maybe teaching like 50 people, there's roses. And then I've at the end you pop it all. Yeah. And then you pop them all at the end. And I forgot the rest of it. So I haven't been protecting my energy in a while. <laughs> I need to go yeah. back to like these protection. There's another one with a bubble where it's like this rose colored bubble, but there's little pinholes in it where your energy can still like good energy can still flow in. You can still flow out, but you're being protected yes. by, by it. So I heard one where you can put little gifts oh, like around you, like little roses and gifts and candies and chocolate and flowers, whatever you want. And then when you go in public, you just allow them, everyone else to take those little gifts and they're not taking your energy, mm -hmm. little sentries around you. So yeah, I've done that a couple of times. You go in a big crowd of places. You're like, hold on, let me put a bunch of gifts out there for everyone. And they're not taking my energy. Mm -hmm. How <laughs> incredible is it? This, a lot of what we learn when we first get into self-development and of course, when we get into the mind and metaphysicals and all that, how important the imagination is because a lot of what we see, like when you're doing Reiki images come up and you're like, oh my God, that's crazy. Uh, you know, how can I tell this person? Cause it just sounds off the wall and it's developing that trust muscle that what you're being given is actually either even helping people or even for yourself, when you um, commit to imagination, when you want that thing, like that relationship or that dream job or that home that you really want, how important it is to have that imagination and then live from the end point, you know, working downwards. Yes. Yes. Yeah. My, um, a, a Reiki teacher I had is a shaman. She's incredible. And she said something I'll never forget. She said, the intention is the medicine. Your intention is the medicine. And so, you know, with Reiki, there's so many little symbols and this and that, and you kind of forget like, where do I put that symbol? What do I yeah. do? And, chakra and it's, chakra yeah, yeah, Sage. yeah. <laughs> right. And, and, but she's like, wait a second, just remember your intention is the medicine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's for everyone. I tell my clients that all the time, just remember the intention is the medicine. Your intention is the medicine. And how powerful is that? I tell my kids that, you know, your intention, what's your intention every morning when you wake up, that's the medicine. Mm, I love it. That's the medicine. I wrote that down. Mm -hmm. Intention is the medicine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, oh gosh, there's so many things that we can go into here, but, um, can you quickly, I know we have to wrap this up soon. Um, can you give, uh, maybe at least one story besides your own of rap, you know, stories of transformation, cause you've transformed your whole life and it's maybe somebody that you worked with where they were like, you know, one way. And then after a couple sessions with you, like their whole life became transformed. Oh yeah, absolutely. Gosh, there's so many here. Let's see. So I had a client who, um, she had actually, she had a very successful corporate type business. And then she started a energy type of healing type of business and something was holding her back. And she, we were progressing. She was doing really well, but there were sort of ending our, I think we were working together for a few months. And she said, I don't know what it is, but I am obsessed if anyone takes a picture of me and 
we had worked through family issues. I'll, I'll add this. We worked through family issues. We'd worked with, we healed so many things, but this final thing, she's like, I can't get past this. I cannot handle it. If somebody takes a picture of me and puts it on social media, I have to see it first. I have to approve it. I'm mm. obsessed with anyone seeing a picture of me. I think I look fat. I think I look terrible. I don't want anyone to see me. I'm, I'm obsessed. Like I have to prove it. And so she's like, this is weird. I need to get past this. I don't know what this is. And in a hypnosis, we went back to her. So she knew she was adopted and she loved her adopted family. She actually had met her adopted mother, her natural mother, excuse me. So she was like, I'm good. Like, I love my, my adopted family. I met my, my natural mother, like there's no secrets. This is all good. You know, she's older, she's established, got a great husband. Life is good. I don't understand. Well, when she went back in hypnosis, she, um, we saw that she had been adopted, but when she was a month old, she had been returned hmm. from the family that adopted her. And she knew that her family, her, her family that adopted her, her parents, they adopted her when she was a month old and there, she didn't, that was kind of old, older. She never knew why she was adopted older. No one explained that or no one really knew. Well, she had been returned because she didn't look like the other kids in the family. Oh my and when God. she was in hypnosis, she could hear the doctor and the nurse saying, well, what are we going to do with her now? She didn't, she didn't look like she could hear the whole conversation. And so she did the research and she looked back and it was confirmed that she was returned after from that original family, she was returned because she didn't look the right part. Oh, that was a blessing. Okay. And then, oh. and then she was adopted. So it made sense that it wasn't anything wrong with her. Wow. And so she was able to heal that part. And now of course, you know, she doesn't have to approve every photo, but that belief, like I didn't look right. I didn't look right. Right. So, but she had um, an image in hypnosis of this little of a light, you know, and the doctor and the nurse staring down at her as a, a one month old. Um, she's like, all I can see is this doctor staring at me going, what are we going to do with her now? And oh my God, um, I'm just, I'm just so stunned by that story. I'm adopted myself. My three, my two other oh, sisters are, are. Okay. we're a melting pot. Um, you know, this is in the early seventies. I mean, I was 1970 and, uh, it was when there was all the race riots going on. I mixed and, uh, and my little sister came from Vietnam after the fall of Saigon. So she's even darker than I am. My other sister's blonde hair, green eyed Irish. Mm -hmm. And we were always taught how, you know, it doesn't matter the color of your skin or whatever, you know, people are going to yeah. love us no matter what. My parents are like both white and German, Italian. And then, um, I mean, I didn't get adopted till I was five months old. So I was older, I think probably because, you know, the color of my skin, my adopt, my foster parents wanted to keep me. But at that time you couldn't adopt those, those kids that you were fostering. So a lot of my stuff I feel is like free you know, pre-adoption and all that. Yeah. It's it's in the womb or something because my mother was, you know, 16 years old when she had me. There's a lot of dysfunction in her family, but just hearing like, what are they thinking? Like this child is like, you're adopting. Of course, it's not going to look like you. I'm just like, right. Oh, I know. poor dear child. But it was I a blessing know. in the long run that she was, was returned. a blessing in the long run, right. And she, she <sighs> what was, what I loved was that she, she didn't feel rejected from that first. She right. was like, she actually, the, the, the wisdom she got from it was so empowering. She was like, mm -hmm. Oh, it was very empowering. She's like right. that whole, that little baby felt that way, but I don't of feel course. that way. Of course. And she could take that baby and love it and, and say, Oh, sweetie, that's why you felt that way. But this is, you have such a loving family now and you know, and she knew she was loved and yeah. she could take that baby. And we did a lot of, you know, really loving work with that baby mm -hmm. that felt rejected. Mm -hmm. um, and if it would have, if she would have felt rejected, we would have done different work. Right. It's okay. You know, if you need more love for that baby at that time, but um, that, that shock was still there and needed to be healed. So, well, yeah. I'm shocked, but I don't know. <laughs> I know like, oh and I God. didn't even like, know you were adopted. So no, it's just, just it's just story. oh my gosh, it's like it just the 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 people that thought that. I'm just like astounded. Oh, I'm just I like, my, like, like jaw dropping this? to my who, who my chest. This? Yeah, it's terrible. I know. So, 
how, what can um, our listeners right now, how can they, what are some practical tips or some takeaways that the, the people listening in on this right now, besides reaching out to you, which I want to know where to find you as well. That's part of it and how to work with you. So how can they apply this to their own journey and self-discovery and growth? Maybe three key takeaways for them. Yeah. One is just the words, the words you say and the images that you have in your mind, those are the most powerful. So just really take some inventory of the words you're saying. What are you saying to yourself? Your mind responds to the words and images that you say. And I think if we all pause, push the pause button, we'd be surprised at some of the things that we say to ourselves. Even if it's little things like, this traffic's driving me crazy, or I can't stand this. It's like, just breathe and and really know your mind's job is to respond to the words and images. So really just say, tell yourself some beautiful things write on a mirror with a dry eraser something to, until you really are saying some wonderful things. I listened to one of your podcasts and I pulled this out because I'm going to do this. I'm going to stick it on my bathroom mirror. I listened I love to it. one of yours. I'm enough, right? I'm enough. I'm enough. Yes. I have it on lipstick and I wiped it off and it was still like the oil was on oh. there. So yeah, I'm, I'm enough. In. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, we can heal ourselves with our thoughts and we need doctors, we need them to heal, you know, help us in moments, but we also can heal ourselves. We're so powerful. So, you know, just, just know that, you know, I, I, I'll be really vulnerable. I recently actually had some kidney and bladder issues and I instantly was like, okay, I need to heal some anger issues and resentment issues. So yes, I went to the doctor for Mm -hmm. those things, but I also called my own healers and energy work and was like, okay, guys, I'm ready. I need to really deal with some anger and resentment issues. Mm -hmm. And I had to go through the, 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 the journey of that and Mm -hmm. things I thought that I had already dealt with. So give yourself permission. Yes. Sometimes we say, I already worked on that. I already (laughs) dealt with that. Um, there might be a deeper layer and it's, so you know, Mm -hmm. it's okay. Um, it doesn't have to look perfect. It's not a checkbox. Your emotions are not a checkbox. Um, it can still be there and just allow yourself to feel. So feel your feelings. Your feelings are real. They're not always telling the truth. Our feelings are real. So just allow yourself to feel and a wonderful journal prompt is, you know, I, Nancy or I, Christina feel and just write, let yourself express your feelings. I've had clients that They were never into journaling, never into connecting in that way. And they were able to come back to me and say, I cannot believe after a week or two of just writing, I so-and-so feel what I've been able to uncover Mm -hmm. in my life. So just that simple exercise is really, really, really profound. Mm. Because feeling is all energy. So you're always creating, nothing is either destroyed or created, you're always creating. So whether it's not good for you, you're still creating that through feeling. And then, um, you know, it's whatever you, can yeah. create, but, you know, feelings is what manifests things. Feelings is what's going to bring your, you know, your vision into reality. Of course you have to train that feeling or like have the right feelings in order to bring it. Cause there's that paradox paradox of intent where like you, there's like that law where like, you think you're doing one thing, but then your subconscious is actually doing another and you're always at battle with that. Yes. Yes. So how can me? Yes. So how can people find and work with you? So uh, my website is uh, www.christinalwoods.com. And I have a free meditation on there. They also can get that at Mm free.christinalwoods.com. It's a hypno meditation um, that is, you know, just a nice healing meditation, probably about 20 minutes. And I also always offer a free hour for anyone that wants to connect with me. It's on my website. They can book mm. a free clarity call and ask questions and inquire if this might be something that works for them or mm-hmm. if we connect. Wow. An hour that is so generous and a meditation is some, some, something that everybody can get right now after hitting the end of this podcast, go download yeah. that and go see Christina out. And, um, there's just one more question I have for you that I ask all my guests 
And first of all, um, before we go into that, I wanted to read this quote, because I love your mission statement, but there's also this quote that you had on your website that today I help women find their own freedom, freedom to love themselves, to love other people, to hold boundaries, to trust their intuition and follow their paths into the lives they love. And that's a whole new paradigm that we're creating right now with all these women that are like, you know, soul centered businesses or being soul centered and living the life that they're meant to live. And, uh, and you help them to discover that. And that leads into my last question. What does it mean for you to live with an awakened heart? It means to, to, to really trust your tap into your intuition, just trust your intuition, you trust your inner voice. An awakened heart is, you know, being, being open, but you know, it's not outside, it's inside. So I mm-hmm. guess it's all kind of connected. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I'm awakened when I'm I'm listening to myself, I'm listening to my inner voice. That was when my whole life changed. That was when I was able to follow this calling. I have this, my whole career changed. I'm I'm with, you know, a, a whole new love in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, my kids are watching their mom follow her heart. I listen to my intuition now. And mm-hmm. so I, and I wasn't able just to do that when I was listening to all the outside mm-hmm. on everything I should do. So mm-hmm. I felt that I felt that in my heart, especially when you were talking about your kids, they're watching you to do what, you know, your soul is calling you to do. I love that. Yeah. How old are your kids? Huge. It's huge. And I know and they're 26 and 22. Ooh, you got little adults, two boys. How cool. I do. They are little adults. Yes. Oh, I love They're it. big adults. <laughs> Towering <laughs> over me. <laughs> well, Christina, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing all your insights and wisdom and all your beautiful heartfelt stories. And I can't wait for all my listeners to find you and work with you. Thank you so much. I really <laughs> enjoyed this, Nancy. You're welcome. You have a beautiful day.